Hello and welcome to the Data Model Essentials Theory. A data model is the blueprint of an application. Every application you know contains a data model in one form or another. Data models consist of models that have a variety of properties. And these models usually have a relationship between each other. This then forms a relational database, or in other words, your data model. So the data of your application is held within your data model. Models can be seen as real life objects, such as a person, an invoice, or a product. Each model holds their own objects, as we call them. They're the items within a model, but more on that later. A model itself can contain multiple of these objects. For example, an employee model of a company can hold 100 objects, which resemble 100 employees. But if the company grows, that model could increase to 2000 objects. So one object is considered a single item within a model. And a model is basically an item in real life, such as an employee, a product, a project, you name it. Objects. An object is a single item from a model that has multiple properties. Think about a product. When you create a model called products, it needs to hold these prod product objects. If we're into fruit, then these objects could be an apple, a banana, or an orange. And these objects will have properties like a name, a price, uh, a species, a color, to differentiate them from one another. And properties describe the specifics of an object. For example, the name can be written in text, the, an email also written in text in an email format, the date of birth or of creation in a date format, the price written in a number or an image provided by a file. The text in bracket are property types. In order to create a proper property, we'll need to be specific about what kind of information we want to save within the property. By specifying the type of our properties, we're making sure that the correct data will be used whilst creating a new object for our models. For example, again, once I ask someone for an email input, then I'm going to use the email property type. This way, when someone puts in their email, it always checks if someone uses the at sign and a correct uh, .nl.com.uk, a correct format for their email. If anything is missing, so for example, if someone provides an email without an at sign, then, well, the application will say, hey, we're missing something, this is not correct, we're not going to save it. And the other item within your data model is relations. A relationship is the connection between two models. By creating a relationship, we can get data from one model to another. A small example would be when we have a model with employees that has a relationship with the Teams model. We can, when we're building our application, get data from an employee and see in which team he is because there is a relation. If there was no relationship between the two models, then there's no way to tell if the employee belongs to a certain team or not. Here are the relationships that we can use. Has many. A movie has many reviews. The belongs to relation. A review belongs to a movie, has and belongs to many. A movie has and belongs to many actors. And the other way around as well. Many actors has and belong to many movies. The proper use of conventions is also very important when you're naming your models, relations and properties. We're using some of the conventions and I'm also going to name them. And keep in mind that this is very important because other developers in your application might run into your database, into your data model, and they need to understand and write their stuff down the exact way, same way you do to prevent confusion. So for models, what we do is we write down the names of a model in singular with a capital letter, with the first letter capitalized. For example, product with a capital P, invoice line 
the word invoice in capital and line in capital, but together. And the same goes for customer data. Customer data, C and D, are both capitalized. For properties, we also write them in singular and complete lowercase, but whenever there's a space between the words, we use an underscore. For example, first name, completely lowercase, and the space in between, we fill it up with an underscore. So this is the base theory for your data model essentials. Good luck with your data model.